Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's RBP Chemical Technology Webinar. Today, we're going to be discussing outsourcing chemical manufacturing or blending, or as we like to call it, everything you want to know about toll blending, but we're afraid to ask. Uh, leading the discussion today is RBP President Ernie Latinsky. Uh, Ernie has been with RBP for uh, over a decade now and has an impressive resume that includes almost three decades of military service, uh, master's degrees in engineering management and strategic studies, and is a fully certified Lean Six Black Belt. Uh, before I turn it over to Ernie, I wanna let you know that we will be answering your questions about toll blending. To submit a question, either click Q&A or throw it up in chat, and we will get to those uh, at the end of the presentation. So without further ado, please welcome Ernie Latinsky. Ernie, how are you doing today? Hey, Eric, thank you very much. Good, you hear me okay? Yep, we hear you great. Good. Hey team and, and partners out there, uh, we really appreciate your time and in, in, you know, being available to take this 30 minute webinar. So my goal here today is to really provide you you know, a little background on, on what contract manufacturing or toll blending or outsourcing of, of chemical manufacturing is. So hopefully you hopefully you learn a little bit as you look at this agenda here. You know, we'll talk about what toll blending or contract manufacturing is, some of the benefits or or, or in your case, the cost benefits or trade-offs of, of toll blending. And then we'll talk about some of the types of toll blending that you could do. You've got options there. But probably the most important part is the last few bullets here when we start talking about the process. And, and uh, when we get to this, hopefully you see some hints for due diligence in, in selecting a, a tow blending partner, you know, in choosing the right individual that meets your needs. And then we'll close out with a short little case study of, uh, of a partner that, that we're doing some blending with, and then we'll take questions as Eric said earlier. Next slide, please, Eric. So just to give you a brief view of RBP Chemical and, uh, so I've got two slides here, and I just want to make sure folks know a little bit about us. So we are a veteran-owned small business, and uh, ISO 9001-2015 certified with our headquarters here in Milwaukee, a, a hop, skip, and a jump from Chicago. We've been around since 1954 and really started in, in printing or graphic arts. So if you've got a newspaper out there, uh, we probably produce chemistry that goes with the ink and into that newspaper or commercial printing job as it may be. We're also in electronics, so print circuit board manufacturing, uh, those are our customers there. And uh, we've got semiconductor customers as well. And then we've really moved forward a little bit into medical implants, so devices that go in the body, whether it's a stent into a heart or an artery or a venous stent, or potentially a coil that may be, you know, be, be put in, into your brain. And then why do I mention all this? I mention this because we really got a technical toll blending here about three or four years ago. Uh, at the end of the day, you'll see uh, industry and material, you wanna choose the best partner you know, to make your product and develop those relationships as you go down the path of continuous improvement. So we'll talk about that a little more with the toll blending here, but again, this was just an overview. And I just wanna let everybody end here with knowing that we have a global footprint. We're a small company, but we understand blending and distribution and we have partners like i said and a facility in india south korea thailand south america and china so again small company we've got that global footprint with expertise and safety logistics we're very good at logistics with the, with the world trade association analytical chemists and phds on staff and then anything to do with safety or regulatory affairs so if you see those three letter acronyms with the government which we'll talk about maybe a little more here we've got expertise on there eric next slide please and I just bring this to you as well. Our mission statement as, as, a, as, a, as a toll blender, okay, is really applying our knowledge from those other industries and understanding your surface chemistry needs and figuring out innovative ways to provide that reliability, productivity, and lowering your operating costs. So when, when you look at toll blending, all right, our vision taken with that mission statement is to become your trusted supply chain partner and not have that transactional relationship you know, as, as we move forward in, in potentially meeting your defined toll blending needs. And I ask that you do that for others as well, and ensuring you do have that dedicated support, you know, dedicated salesperson and, and dedicated supply chain within your toll blender, rather than just that transactional buy-sell uh, opportunity that you may find out there. Next slide. Final slide on RBP real quick. If, if you take a look at this, 
Uh, you'll see that we started with printing. So you got a press room on the left there and it's printing is pretty simple. You're depositing a thin layer of ink on paper, but it's requiring many different chemistries. And for us, what we did since 1954 is we moved into other industries as we talked about earlier, everything from print circuit board to photochemical milling to semiconductor to that medical devices you'll see. At the end of the day, once again here, uh, it's, it's about learning that transfer function you know, fr from a, from a uh, uh, technical perspective of what you want your chemistry to do. And, and when you go to a tow blender, we'll talk about this a little more, maybe how they could help you out in optimizing your chemistry so it optimizes either your processes internally or where you're potentially selling it to your partners. Eric, if you go to the next slide, we'll, we'll get into the tow blending piece. So quite simply, you may ask yourself, what is tow blending? Definition, if you take a look at it, it's, it's just a common service for chemical companies, i.e. your tow blender, or you may hear contract manufacturer, all right, to, to manufacture, fulfill your chemistry blending, all right, in order, based on your business model, to reduce production risks internally in your organization, or potentially save in capital investments, which may be labor, all right, it may be material, or it may be capital expenditures and equipment. So there's that trade-off there that you could go and find this common service somewhere else. The way it works a little bit is you'll, the tow blender will receive your intellectual property formula, all right? Or in many cases, if you don't have full IP or formula developed, that's where you could get help. And that's, that's where we come in with tow blending. We look at the technical or analytical aspect rather than just you know, getting a formula, which we could do as well, but we like to provide that value. So going back to this, you'll receive the IP or the formula, all right? and uh, you should always ask yourself, if the tow blender doesn't want to sign a non-disclosure agreement or a confidentiality agreement, is that the right person to ask, ask to work with? But that's the first thing that should happen. And then after that, simply you're converting that formula into finished goods for production or a conversion fee. All right, so it's, it's in essence a service fee. If you take a look at it, quite simply, tow blending, and there's options we'll talk through on the next slide here, is, out, is an outsourcing option for chemical needs. Some of the benefits you take a look at tow blending here, and again, there's cost benefits associated with this and trade-offs. But if you take a look, you know, by the definition of tow blending, some of the potential benefits could be that, you know, that you do not have to invest that capital equipment or upgrade if you have a new process or chemical need, so you're going to a tow blender. Again, similar, you don't need specialized personnel, and by specialized personnel, uh, if you have somebody blending, they're probably going to have to go through hazardous communication training. They're probably going to have to go through uh, Resource Conservation Recovery Act training and, and potentially creating hazardous waste. And then many other things, which we'll talk about with regulatory here a little more. But it stops, it stops you from potentially investing in that human capital that you may not be able to find or having a hard time finding, or you may not you know, see that niche in your organization. To go to the third bullet here, the next piece is really a balance sheet item for you, all right? So you can actually outsource your manufacturing. It, it precludes you from holding those inventory carrying costs for either raw materials or packaging or whatever else comes with it to include finished goods, which we'll talk about. And you're eliminating the need for floor space. And with floor space, you know, when you're manufacturing, you probably need, there's probably some constraints from regulatory agencies here again with, uh, you know, having diking, you know, um, containment systems and so forth. So again, this is a trade-off, you know, when you start taking a look at it, but in this case, it, you know, could be a big benefit to your balance sheet and, and uh, what, what you have with your footprint. Fourth bullet on here, uh, you may see, if you're blending your own chemistry, some operating capital, you know, associated with maintenance expenditures. So now you need somebody that could potentially fix pumps, reactors, scrubbers, all right, so you may not need that maintenance personnel or that niche expertise, as well as the maintenance expense of keeping up your tanks, your reacting vessels, and then all the ancillary equipment required to ensure quality safety and delivery. Fifth bullet on here, this is, this is the regulatory piece I was referring to earlier, all right? If you, another trade-off here, but if, if you don't wanna deal with potentially some reporting requirements, expertise required, whatever else may be in your logistics department or your, or your EHS, your environmental health and safety department, all right, you could actually go to the tow blender and have them help you out with these things. So I throw out some of these governed acronyms. There's many more, 
but you know, OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Administration, Rojas, which is all over the world, a restriction on hazardous substances. You'll hear another one in the EU called REACH. You know, the Environmental Protection Agency or Administration, Department of Homeland Security, Department of Transportation, and we could go on and on and on. Um, as things become maybe a little more complex, you know, with your with products, you may add some of these regulatory pieces on here that you're governed by. So DEA or Drug Enforcement Agency comes up as well in many cases with some chemicals. And, and again, your toll blender could help you out with this if you want to outsource it. And then finally, I think the most important thing of toll blending, and this is where RBP looks at it from a technical perspective. Uh, if you've got a formula you've been using and you're making in-house and you're looking at potentially optimizing that formula or, or, or looking at the next generation chemistry need, this is where you really should think about a toll blender that may have some human capital and expertise, as well as that analytical, you know, both from a, a chemist or a, a PhD as we have on staff here, or equipment expertise when you start talking about more robust testing required for some of this chemistry. So again, at the end of the day, these are benefits, but they're all cost benefits and trade-offs. And it's up to you to make that business decision of, can we get some of these savings and maybe pay a little more than what we're doing internally? Vice, keeping it in-house, maybe having some of that controllership, all right? So that's, that's really the big trade-offs, but a lot of times we'll see you know, our partners come to us because of the benefits I outlined here. So again, I ask you, you know, to take take a look at this, you know, when you're doing that, that cost benefit analysis, think through some of these things as an organization. And if you have a good toe blender, you're trying to contact a partner out there, they'll help you with this. They should be helping you with all this for you to make that decision. You know, you, it's, it's more than that transactional relationship you want to develop here once again. Eric, if you, go, if you could go to the next slide, I'd appreciate it. So here's the different options you have when you start thinking about you know, outsourcing your, your chemistry blending. You may want to ask this too when you're, when you're searching for that toll blender. So I just put down what, what I typically see as a different options requested from initially from you know, a request for quote all the way to a partnerships. The first one you'll see is something called turnkey. And if you know the term turnkey, that's what we're talking about. So at the end of the day, those two bullets there, the customer's providing you a formula or potentially helping you optimize that formula with the chemical staff that that toe blender may have on site, all right, in the production of the specialized chemical compound. Once that IP intellectual property is provided a toe blender under a non-disclosure agreement, and potentially a contract, the toe blender will really do the rest for you. So that's really taking care of everything from ordering the raw materials to production, to the quality control, the documentation, retention of documents, uh, traceability of raw materials, and then in the packaging. And then you could even get a toll blender to do third-party blind delivery with your label on it for the product as, as, a, as, a, as a private label. So that's what you'll see as something called turnkey, all right? Um, the next one you'll see on here is, is, is service-based. So this is where the potential customer goes to a toe blender and provides the formula, raw materials, packaging, and all the specs. And really what the toe blender is doing is just providing that blending service based upon a delivery schedule. So think of it a little bit as, as, as you're borrowing somebody's equipment and you're paying someone to put their labor and that equipment to, to convert all your raw materials into your packaging, all right, and then going out the door. So You'll see that some, sometimes uh, as well with that service piece, depending on those cost benefits we talked about earlier for your business. And then finally, hybrid. Uh, again, it's a standalone comment. You may see this as, as, a, uh, as a mix of the other two services I, I talked about. So we see this quite often. Um, and and uh, you'll see you know, customers say, hey, I'll buy the raw materials. I've got good raw material sourcing on it. And I need you to do the rest of it. And then we'll figure out, you know, send it to our warehouses and we'll ship it as an example. So that are, those are the three types of toll blending you'll see. And again, these are all options based on your business needs and where you want to go. And it comes down to, at the end of the day, it comes down to controllership and, and money, in essence, when you start doing this. It's no different than outsourcing any other service in production of a, of a, of a, of a product 
or, or sometimes some kind of ancillary service from that. So Eric, I'll go to the next slide real quick. And this is really the slide that is magical, I think, in this presentation. And this is the step-by-step, -step, how does it work if I really wanna outsource some of my chemical manufacturing? So this is pretty rudimentary what I have on here, the nine steps, but kinda there are- like a board game. Both, say again? It kinda looks like a board game. I didn't design this slide, but I sort of think it's pretty cool. All right. But if you think about it, it is climbing that hill and, and, and running around on the bottom there to get into that handshake at the end of the day, Eric. So but yeah, it does look like a board game a little. Um, so so in each one of these steps, I'm going to give a couple tidbits here. If you need more information, we actually have a checklist we could walk through with you on this as you're searching for a tow blender or provide you some counsel or advice, you know, if, if you're going down that direction, either with RBP or what you're looking around. But we, we take a lot of pride in this, in actually putting a process together for you to have confidence in what we do. So the first thing we usually do is if we get an inquiry, whether word of mouth, uh, current customer, install based customer, or a website inquiry, or, or whatever medium it comes in here, is we'll do that in informal discovery. You have to like the person you're work, working with. So you got to like Ernie. You got to like Eric, right? You got to like some of the folks here. So you take a look at step one, that informal discovery, and say, is there mutual interest here? Is this a partner I want to work with? Is there a level of trust I think I have in this individual uh, to go forth? So, and, and you ask that question in formal discovery do we want to work together? So I know you do this out there every day, but I just put it down as a foundational base before you proceed to step two, which is really providing a non-disclosure agreement and then potentially some of your intellectual property to, you know, you're gonna outsource to a blender. So step two is always an NDA at RBP here. Uh, we've got non-disclosure agreements. We've got contracts we could put in place. We've got confidentiality agreements. We'll tailor to using a customer's or future partner, all right, to, to using ours. So whatever you want to do here, you're really in the driver's seat is what I'm telling you here, what you want to put in that NDA, all right? So once you have that NDA, I consider step three the most important process step here, and that is formal discovery. In formal discovery, what we usually try to do is, as it states, formal discovery. We have a confidential, confidentiality agreement, and this is figuring out what that tow blender could do and what your requirements are. So for us, we always ask the questions, and I'm gonna list a few of them here. What are your manufacturing requirements? What are your technical requirements? What analytical testing or, or methods do you want us to utilize, all right? Packaging requirements, all right? There's reactions that happen in different packages, right? So let's take a look and discover that together. Um, storage, are there any special or unique storage conditions? I'm gonna use UV light as one, temperature is another, okay? So those are all things we look at here to include shipping requirements. As this product gets shipped to either your customer in a turnkey solution or to your warehouse, do we wanna use specific modes of, of travel or, or transit, I should say? Do you want, does RBP have that capability? Do we want to use your trucking service? Is it is it is this product freeze protected? What happens if it's 20 degrees out or minus zero degrees out? What will happen to it? So those logistic requirements are really important with, with respect to shipping. And then finally, supply chain requirements. And this is this is really the sir or ma'am, what do you need for inventory? What do you want us to do for safety stock? We want to put minimum or maximum points in play. So those are all the questions we ask in this formal discovery. And it's really a two-way conversation at that point. The takeaway here is you go back to step one, that informal discovery, you know, you sign an NDA and now you're looking at formal discovery. This is where you really should be building confidence with your tow blender at this point in time. And you'll know if they have the technical expertise, the logistics expertise, you know, potentially being a trusted partner with your IP and making the product to your standards across the board as we discussed. So once we go through that formal discovery process, and, and, and when I say it's the most important, I'm not saying this is, this is weeks and months, but really we wanna get those questions answered. And it's up to the speed that you, know, you wanna potentially do as a customer to figure out that, that pacing and tempo on that formal discovery. But once we do that, we come to some consensus what RBP does is we will take your intellectual property and we will take our expertise 
from all those areas that we know within the supply chain. And we will develop a process with the output being a batch ticket, work instructions in our standard operating procedures for your product. And what you will get there is you will get a batch ticket with all personal protective equipment classes. And I think there's 19 under OSHA today. The procedures and orders of addition, you'll get the raw material and finished good, uh, lot number traceability, everything calculated to the way you want it on this batch ticket, whether it's a weight percent or per gallon or by volume, and those are the things that we'll do. We'll also have all our packaging instructions. And if you've never outsourced chemistry, I will tell you that there's specific things that need to be done with, with packaging. You have to have UN certification. You have to torque vessels, a correction packaging to specific foot pounds. And that's a DOT requirement, Department of Transportation. So we'll put all that down as well as regulatory requirements. And by regulatory, if we're shipping it to one country, we may have a different standard on our batch ticket to package it or put it in a different area uh, from sending it to another country. But this is the output of everything we've done in that formal discovery with you. And you will get the documentation and say, sir, ma'am, this is what we think is the process we should put your chemistry through. Um, or sometimes you may provide it, you know, that that batch ticket or process. So we, in those cases, we say, hey, we took a look at it. We had a couple of questions. We believe that if you do A, B, and C, we could potentially optimize what you're doing and, and have better safety, quality, delivery, or cost. So really important step as well that follows on from, from that formal discovery. Next thing we do at this point, once we have concurrence and we feel really good about the process development in potential institutionalizing into, into our manufacturing and our supply chain and customer service, we'll actually do a small research and development, small scale batch. So many times we'll have a customer with a great idea, you know, hey, I could make a liter or 500 mil, milliliters of this. We'll start with a small scale batch and, and we'll move up that scale, that gradient to validating it in the lab with our chemists and PhDs and equipment. And then we'll move to step six once we have confidence as teammates and look at doing that small scale batch in manufacturing. So if you need 5,000, I'm using a number, if you need 5,000 gallons a month, step five will probably produce, you know, a quarter of a gallon, a liter. Manufacturing small scale, we may start with 100 gallons and work our way to 1,000 gallons or two to 5,000 gallon vessel in this example. But we try to do that as well to make sure that, that it's stepwise, uh, perfectly understood what we need to do with that process we developed in step four. So once we're done with manufacturing small scale, before we even manufacture, we will do something called an FMEA with you if, if, or for you if you want. And that's a failure modes and effects analysis. And what that is, is taking a look at every step we define in the process in step four and seeing what could go wrong. And by what could go wrong, it's probability of a failure mistake. Uh, so that's, that's the, prob the probability of a failure mistake, I'm sorry, the occurrence and how bad it is. So we have a scale from one to 10. If you use this tool, 10 being the worst. If you have something that's a 10 on all three things in a step, 10 times 10 times 10 is a thousand. That's what we'll work with you as a partner to figure out how to mitigate those thousand, you know, the, the biggest one and work our way down to the one that be, may be a one, a one and one in those three categories, multiply across a one. Do we need to do anything? We feel there's no risk here. So we feel this is important as a partner to do this when you start talking toe blending for that latent defect failure or that holy moly moment when something's on a truck and, and we missed it as, as teammates, you know, together. So again, this is a little value added service that we feel very, uh, very, very strongly that, that we utilize together with you, if you want, or we won't do it, but this is the way we develop our products. And we, we highly recommend, you know, FMEAs are used, you know, to give you confidence there as well. So once we do that FMEA, we put some of those either people controls or capital controls in place if needed, we will do that manufacturing quali qualification of larger scale batches. Again, for us, it's full traceability. We're governed by many agencies. Uh, so you will know the raw material, you know, lot that came in. If you needed that paperwork, you will know what operator made it on what day. Our batch size, we have full traceability in the system we call Chempax. So that's our enterprise resource planning system. 
Others may have different systems. We like it because it's tailored for chemical manufacturing and it provides us everything we need, you know, for decades back if, if required. So once we have a partnership, we're manufacturing together a little bit. What we try to do is, is really look at continuous improvement that will drive your business with, with us as a trusted partner. So that's where you start talking at continuous improvement. Hey, how can we make this product safer? How can we have better quality on it? How can we deliver it better? And how can we reduce costs, whether a variable cost or fixed cost? So I throw this out here and, and I took a little longer than the other slides because I highly advise that, you know, you ask some of these questions. And again, I'm very, I'm very willing, you know, Eric, if we get names from here, you know, to provide the full checklist with these steps as we go through it as a little how-to guide, step-by-step -step in, in, in figuring out, you know, how toe blending works with your partner. Next slide, please. I'm going to close out here and we'll, we'll have some time for questions. This is just a little case study, I, I'm, I, anecdotal case study. We took one of our partners and uh, this is a partner that came to us. They had a very dangerous in-house mix of volatile acid. All right, so you think sulfuric acid, 99% type stuff with an alcohol solvent. So, which is something that's very volatile with a, with a flash point uh, that, could, that, it could, that could ignite at uh, very much below room temperature. You put some of these things together, uh, you could have an explosion. And, and in this case, these folks were doing something in-house. They don't use much chemistry. And uh, they, 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 had a, they had a couple concerns. And, and I'll just leave it there. So they contacted us and said, hey, can you guys do this blend? And that's where we started working through, as we talked about earlier, once we had an NDA, you know, some of those formal discoveries. And we discovered that we require high purity materials, uh, very tight quality control ranges for six analytical tests, special packaging required with something called a vent cap, which will allow gaseous, extraneous gas reaction potentially to, to vent out. And then from the supply chain perspective, we developed some min-max points of what we wanted to stock. It was a little different model because it's variable demand schedule with a lot of a lot of cyclical demand. So we helped smooth that out. And then they asked us to storage here on site and 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 uh, put a PO in, uh, blanket PO in this case, to figure out how we how we get this out there and and service their end user in this case. So those are the requirements we had. We sat down, uh, took about two weeks in this case to figure out how to go from you know that formal discovery to you know the manufacturing qualification. It was a quick turn project. At the end of the day, this is this is taking a look about a year later here, 11 months, I think is the time frame I grabbed this data from. But this is what we came up with, you know, for, for our for what is now our partner, initially a customer. So we got a 27% cost reduction in product cost. And and really what we did here is we leveraged our our current sources of raw materials, our our supply chain in lieu of somebody that didn't may not have that expertise or enough scale. So we helped them with a you know positive income statement by reduced variable costs on their product before they sold it to the end user. We did the same thing here in freight reductions. Uh, we, we did some comparisons. We actually did something which I think is a really good thing that we actually hedged tariffs some years ago. And if you know anything about transportation, it's tough to get a truck today or it's tough to ship inbound or outbound overseas. So we wound up using our, our freight carriers uh, you know, for, for this specific individual or this organization, I should say. Again, a positive income statement benefit. We also looked at inventory carrying costs. So we were able to figure out using our raw materials, many like raw materials, of maintaining very short min-max points, always having product on the floor here. So the customer didn't have to worry about raw materials. You know, those purchases, they didn't have to worry about mixing this stuff in, in probably the not most optimal environment. So we reduced our carrying costs within the supply chain as well by about 35%. And again, a lot of this was leverage of, uh, you know, the finished good cost and then us holding some of the raw materials which we use. And probably the most important thing for, for this specific customer was elimination of, of what is called a very small quantity generator for hazardous waste uh, with those governing bodies here again. So they didn't have to fill out the paperwork. They didn't have to worry about waste. We took care of that. You know, it's priced into the finished good by, you know, the, the, the unit cost. So we reduced a lot of paperwork, extraneous need for expertise and everything that comes with potentially having hazardous materials and hazardous waste, you know, on your floor. So, but again, this is just one case study. Uh, we love doing this stuff. 
you know, we love discovery and learning about what you're trying to do and help optimize it. And again, this took about 11 months to get to, you know, those percentages there. But we're, on, we're you know, we're looking at product two and three right now as we speak, you know, which is really uh, a, a great thing to know that, you know, some, we've earned somebody's trust, you know, as, as our, I'm not going to say Toblin, as their partner. So I just leave that out for you. And, and I will tell you that solution set. The, the, the more transparent you become with a partner, just like you have partners and customers out there today, the more you could get some of those savings. And it really comes down to trust, you know, at the end of the day when you're looking for a blender. So, Eric, I think that concludes uh, where we're at here. And uh, we're at 1130. Maybe we have time for a couple of questions. We do. We definitely do. And I'll remind everybody again, if you have a question, just put it up in Q&A or chat. And if you don't see those buttons, hover Hover around your screen and a little toolbar will pop up either at the top or bottom of your screen and just click chat or Q&A. And uh, so we do have a few questions. Uh, first one is, what if my chemical formula is merely an idea or something blended at a very small scale in the lab? Can a toll blender make this idea product come to fruition? It depends. <laughs> so... RVP, we talked about that in our process a little bit, right? That's what we'll do. We'll 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 help and, and partner, you know, on the front end to see if we could take ideation or brainstorming or your skunk works, you know, and help you out with it a little bit. So again, we have a lot of technical expertise and you know, with our our all the degrees we have upstairs with folks, they will work with you on that. Uh, other toe blenders may not. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that goes into that service piece. It's, it's providing a formula and, you know, I'll get it out the door for you. But we take a lot of pride in, in partnering from the long term with you. So that's one of our mar mantras. Our, our, our CEO, Mark Hanberg, is not on the call here, but we've been around since 1954. And private company, we will work with somebody like that all day to figure out how to build that partnership over decades, which is the incredible piece. And again, I say it depends. That, that's a model. Uh, Eric, that whoever asked this question out there, that that's what we use, and mm -hmm. we'll take a look at it. And and I'll leave you on the inverse of that. If if somebody's looking to get 100 gallons a year, you'll you'll often hear a toll blender say that's not worth our time. So it depends on the business model of both the toll blender and the organization you're you know you're you're talking to here. You're you know you're with and figuring out those cost benefit trade offs. But yeah, for for us, we we like I say we I'm gonna say we enjoy it. And, and for us here, I say it's fun. And then the chemists get it and, you know, they do that discovery with you. So it's, it's, it's a little bit enjoy, enjoyable for us because it's a learning opportunity. Right. Everybody loves a challenge. <laughs> All right. So uh, another one here. If we want to pay for the raw materials or packaging, is there an option to leverage a toll blender supply chain contacts for better material quality or costs or delivery yeah. considerations? Yeah, I, I think I actually touched on that one a little bit and hopefully that came in, mm -hmm. you know, before what I touched upon. I would definitely do that. Uh, you'll, you'll see uh, you'll see many of these blenders may already have those raw materials on site here. If you're doing it internally, you know, you're, you're buying a thousand pounds a year. Th that toll blender may be buying a million pounds a year. And you start right. talking that scale, economy of scale, you're going to see significant cost reduction. So once you once you do that discovery, you, know, you can take a look at it and say, hey, here's the formula, you know, figure out the price points you want to be at. But I would definitely use that scale, you know, of your blender. So fortunately or unfortunately for RBP, we've got 900 raw materials. You know, we've got hundreds of different intellectual property products that we do. Um, right. I say that good and bad because it's, it's just a lot of breadth and scale. But yeah, we probably have those raw materials on hand in many instances. And that's where we look to you know, leverage. And I should say, we don't leverage our supply chain. We partner with them as well, Eric, you know, so if we're ever asked that question, you know, we could even do those connections together. So we want, we want the folks to trust us and then where we may be getting the raw material packaging from as well. Full okay. transparency. Thank you. All right. So we great question. Have, yeah, yeah, definitely. Thank you. Um, and we do have two more questions in the docket here. Uh, again, everybody, if you would like to ask a question, now's your chance. Try to stump Ernie. Uh, you can put that up in Q&A or in the chat. I'm monitoring both of them right now. Uh, so let's see. What can I do if a toll blender does not have the quality control or analytical equipment required to complete my formula-specific requirements? That is a good question. Oh, I caramba. Okay. 
I, uh, that's a that's a really good question. Uh, I think that goes to that formal discovery. So so you know you start doing that you know informal discovery. You, you could ask those questions at that point in time, mm-hmm. right? You could go into the NDA process and then ask that after formal discovery, as we talked about. There's two options there, though. I I, I think that we that we would use, or I potentially recommend. Uh, the first is if 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 that capability doesn't exist and you like that you know potential partner, you've got six different quality assurance or quality control tests. There are options out there for for a blender to to again outsource a specific test to a, a lab, an analytical lab. So that's one way to do it. The other way to look at it is if you're going to build a partnership, all right, there may be some capital that could be brought in, you know, from both parties to buy a piece of equipment. You know, that that's required. If you're going to look at long term, which we do, that's yeah. something we may be open to, you know, if it, if it makes sense economically for us and it makes economical sense for the partner. So right. sometimes it's more than just I have the capability or not. If in this case, I'm using the anecdotal example, if I got capability for five of the tests, there's ways to bridge that, all right? And if, and if you really uh, are looking for that partner long-term toe blending option, I think you could make that work with, you know, finding that capability to meet that requirement as a team. Wow. And again, Eric, we talked about this earlier for that question, great question. It really comes down to trust and, and teamwork. Yeah, well, definitely. So, it sounds like, I mean, the more, op- like you, you said earlier, the more open you are, um, the more savings you're going to find, the more capabilities yeah. you're going to find. This is exactly what that is. It's, it comes down yeah. to the communication. Yeah. And yeah. I'll tell you what, I mean, I didn't mention it before, but that's where an on-site visit, if, if you really want to vet or, or you know, bring your quality team in to do a checklist or audit, that toll blender should be very open to that. And you'll, you'll feel quickly, you know, capabilities that you talk to on the phone or on Teams or Zoom if they are, if they really come to fruition in that expertise and, and uh, teamwork is there. Right. Okay. So we got one more question here on the docket. Everybody, again, final warning. If you would like to ask Ernie a question, post it in Q&A or post it up in chat. Uh, what is the unit of measure used by toll blenders to charge for the service? To charge the service fee. I'm sorry. Uh, again, Eric, that's a really good question. It's up to the customer. Mm-hmm. If you want to do it by pound, you know, by package, by gallon, by liter, so you know, by weight, by volume, whatever we're talking here, uh, your toll blender should be able to. to we we will work with you to your requirement, and that comes up again, I think, in that in that formal discovery, and you figure and you're figuring out. So, uh, I always listen to the voice of the customer, mm-hmm. and if the voice of the customer says, "I want this by pound or kilogram or or." By stones, all right, whatever, whatever it may be, that's what we work to. And and, and you should have, if, if someone doesn't have that flexibility, to me, that's a signal that there may be potentially bigger issues because it's simple conversion and it's simple math. So I leave that to you. What your organizational needs are should be what, what your partner should be looking at because those are really simple conversions. And uh, you'll see what flexibility that, that Toe Blender has. For us, we'll, whatever you want. You know, we'll figure out the unit of measure, how you want, how you want that cost, you know, or service provided. So great question again. But again, those are all indicators. Mm-hmm. Uh, if someone's not flexible to do that, how how flexible are they going to be if, if I really need something rushed? You know what I mean? And, and uh, you know, I have an emergency. So, again, yeah. normal business. This is just outsourcing. And uh, the, the, the customer should drive the process, you know, and work through that diligence, you know, with 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 RBP in this case. So yeah, there'll be trade-offs, but those are, the, that's a great indicator. Great question again. I, Eric, could you end questions? I'm done. I'm, I'm spun okay. out of very much. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. well, it, no, it does appear that we are out of questions for today, which uh, is a good time to kind of wrap this thing up. Uh, everybody, thank you so much for attending today. Ernie, thank you for leading us through this. Deanna, thank you for your support there. Um, if you would like to learn more about RBP Chemical, you can find it at uh, find more information at rbpchemical.com. You can also contact us uh, that way if you would like to uh, ask some questions but didn't feel like answering asking them in front of the group. Um, thank you guys very much, and uh, have a great day.